Hi, I'm Dr. Pajari, host of The Prognosis, uh, which is a palliative podcast. And today we will be talking about what is hospice, questions pertaining to hospice. My guest today is Evelyn Perez Rivera, who's back for uh, more questions. So welcome and enjoy. So the second question that we have for today is, what are common reasons for coming on hospice? Um, Or more specifically, what are common conditions? Um, In the first question we talked about, what is hospice? It's a, a program. And we talked about some misconceptions of hospice, and we talked a little bit about the idea of hospice and where it came from. Here, let's talk right now about um, who are the people that we are uh, bringing on service and why, what conditions and things like that. Um, So we see a lot of congested heart failure, uh, CHF, cancer patients, ALS patients, End stage renal, mm. Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, um, the remnants, or even the event of a stroke, and um, how it has debilitated and paralyzed that patient. Um, so those are common um, common conditions that come in, um, but the most important thing that we need to understand is the uh, the terminality of it because you might be uh, at the beginning of CHF or you know congested heart failure uh, but then not be a hospice candidate mm-hmm. the same thing when it comes to neurological disorders it might be at the beginning stages and it might you might not be there to be eligible for hospice care That's actually very important uh, to say, yes, we have all those conditions. There's also uh, HIV AIDS is another one, Um, although it's a more manageable disease in this era than before. Uh, But conditions uh, are conditions over time. So bringing someone on service at the right time, and I think that that really requires kind of a team approach Um, I know as a medical director, it's a very important process of vetting clinicals uh, along with an assessment of the patient to make sure that we're bringing someone really at the right time, at that six months or less uh, Mm -hmm. juncture. And one thing we didn't mention in the last question was that um, Medicare kind of guides us Uh, Medicare being the biggest insurer here in the U.S., has guided us um, in the idea of that six months or less, Mm -hmm. uh, the way that they've set themselves up um, and the way that we onboard patients and the way we get reimbursement is really based quite much, you know, on that model. Yeah, yeah. Um, Going back to uh, to the criteria, it's important that the patient uh, is at that junction to be referred to hospice. Um, And this is not to scare anyone because there are many people that has that diagnosis of CHF, yet they are not at the end stage. Mm -hmm. So there is a criteria, as you mentioned, with Medicare, with what needs to happen in order to be eligible Mm -hmm. to come into hospice services. Yeah, and you reminded me, uh, you know, another one that's uh, uh, an illness that we see commonly is COPD, so end-stage emphysema. Um, I liked what you said. I mean, the dementia family of dementias is pretty a pretty big family of illnesses that we mm-hmm. see often. Um, Alzheimer's dementia, vascular dementia, frontotemporal uh, dementia, um, and then dementia. Vascular dementia. Uh, yes, also. Um, and Lewy body dementia. And then even associated dementias, I was going to say, you may have someone with Parkinson's who has dementia. So you may be managing also more than one entity, mm-hmm. or there may be more than one criteria, uh, you know, more than one thing that fits the bill for bringing someone on service. Absolutely. Um, so... And any other thoughts with regards to um, illnesses and conditions that 
Uh, we bring on service in hospice. Um, I, I would say one thing is that with regards to managing each one of them, uh, they really take on different forms of management. So CHF, we might be, or congestive heart failure, we might be bringing someone on with end-stage CHF. That may be dealing with a, a left ventricular assist device, or that may be dealing with them being on a, uh, you know, an infusion to help them with their pumping function. Um, the COPD patient may be on some form of non-invasive ventilation. Uh, the mm -hmm. ALS patient may be, the patient with cancer uh, may have a need for infusions mm -hmm. or certain types of cancers maybe even have a feeding tube. Mm -hmm. So you start to get into kind of all these different types of illnesses that we onboard for hospice, but they have each their own qualities in management and each their own qualities in the trajectory. Yeah, and we cover it all. And we cover it all, yeah. And I know you have a personal passion also for ALS. Um, any thoughts there for, for a little message for outreach, for getting? Absolutely. So when it comes to ALS patients, these are patients that um, ALS, number one, is not a very common um, disease. And since it's not very common, uh, there is not a lot uh, out there and you need to have the right team and the right people and the right expertise. Um, I am, um, uh, it's kind of a mixed feeling for me that I, I can consider myself almost an expert in dealing with an ALS patient, knowing what they need, knowing how to, uh, to approach different different uh, junctions that that we uh, that we see with ALS patients uh, so definitely um, out of all these illnesses that we mentioned they are some that are more complex than others and ALS is one of those yeah that's actually very true it requires quite a number of things put in place mm -hmm. um, to make sure that you're addressing uh, a lot of the aspects, but I will say each of these really has its own manifestation. Um, you know, again, a cancer patient or, or some form of cancer, which manifests in pain, for example, or mm -hmm. pain crises and requiring really aggressive management from that standpoint, or the volume issues, meaning the fluid issues, fluid retaining issues uh, uh, with congestive heart failure, or even COPD with the respiratory issues, which requires so much education. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't realize how much you can do to, to take the edge off of the respiratory and ALS also with that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, but, but it's also important that um, the doctor that is seeing those patients um, guide to, to, a, to hospice, um, because I don't want people hearing our message just because there is CHF uh, doesn't automatically qualifies you to be a hospice patient. Mm -hmm. um, so understanding where you are, where you are, and leaving it to the professionals to make the referral at that time, um, because there are certain criteria, as we mentioned earlier, on how to qualify coming into hospice. Perfect. Thank you.